I haven't talked to Nick in about, gosh, a year. Nick, how have you been? Um, to say that I'm doing good would be a lie. So, um, I've basically just been doing the same thing I've been doing, except for the things that put me in jail, like stealing. I'm um, still out here on drugs, still not making the right choices. Um, a few things have changed, like I said, as far as the things that put me in jail. But other than that, I'm still out here, you know, screwing up. How old are you now? I'm 19, I'll be 20 at the end of this year. 20, I met you when you had just turned 18, right? Yep. Going by quick. Yeah, it's going by pretty quick. Um, I got a, I got a few places lined up that I might want to go to. There's a place called Crossroads on uh, 13th Ave, and there's a place called New Freedom. I just got to get the, I just got to take the initiative, take that first step. But as far as right now, I'm just kind of still in that hole, in that rut where I'm just kind of like just not comfortable, but not, not to the point where I'm ready to make the change. I know it sounds bad when I say it like that, but I haven't, I haven't got the initiative yet. I haven't made the first step. Is that? Is that all addiction? Is that how hard it is to get off these pills? Or what, what do you attribute that to? Well, I mean, people that say, oh, it's the addiction, I think it's a cop-out because, yeah, it's a big part of it, but also I'm choosing, I'm choosing to do the wrong thing. I'm choosing to make, to make bad choices at this point. You know, there's no excuses for me to still be out here, but when, they, when I start thinking about it, it's like, it seems like it's gonna be so hard for me to do, and it's easier just to stay, just to stay with doing what I'm doing. It's easier to do that for me. You did seven months. Six months and some change. Six months locked up. That's why I haven't, haven't seen you out here. Right. So that's a, that's a good amount of time. Six months. Yeah. Did you say you were clean when you got out? When I got out, I, I was clean except for they had me on methadone while I was in there. And um, the day that I got out, I didn't get my dose. So. When I got out, I was going through methadone withdrawals. And so that did, that kind of set me up for failure, you know, because I had to go get well. Because methadone withdrawals, people that use, they'll, they'll tell you it's way worse than, than fentanyl. It's a way worse withdrawal. So I was going through that already at the time, so that, you know, it didn't help. And you said you have a couple of things, a couple of places lined up. Yeah. Crossroads and some other place. I got this sheet of paper they gave me this time when I was released with all these different places on it that I can go to. Um, so, you know, I'm getting to the point where I want to try to take that first step and try one out. But as of right now, like I said, I'm still stuck in that rut. Is that, is that court mandated? You're, you're considering these because they're, they're no. taking you or you're... No, I was ROR. I was released on my own recognizance. I don't have to do anything, but I, if I don't, then I know what's going to happen. It's either going to be, I'm going to stuck out here and get worse and worse and worse, or I'm going to die. Like my mom said when I was on the phone with her, you know, a couple weeks ago in jail, she said that she doesn't know if she's ever going to see me again. You know, so and I don't, I don't want that. I don't want to make that come true for her. I need to see, I need to see my mom again. That's, you know, that's my little brother. It hurts to think about. That's why I don't even like, like thinking about it. People would ask me, you know, hey, have you seen Nick? Have you seen Nick? And I said, you know what? I haven't seen him since his father passed away. Uh, your father passed away last year. Uh, you you knew because your mom told you, but you know I, the last time I saw you, I let you know. And, I, and then right after that, I hadn't seen you in a while, so I, I thought you might have gone back home to to say a final goodbye. No, I didn't. I didn't get the opportunity to do that, and it's my fault. I had I, have, I had opportunities a long time ago to go home, and I and I chose to make the wrong decision. So I can't blame it on anybody but myself. You know, I didn't get to pay their, my last respects to my dad because of the decisions I made. I'm still, I'm still working on that. I'm still trying to face that. It's hard. Do you think uh, there'll be a time soon, maybe after you get out of a, a recovery treatment center, that you'll go, go see your mom and your siblings? I hope so. Has your mom ever mentioned coming over here to visit you? She doesn't have the money. I mean, I told her before, I mean, she's at the point where she probably going through her mind, she probably thinks even if she were to come here, I still wouldn't go home. But that, that's, that's preposterous. If she was standing in front of me, there's no way. I, I, would definitely, I would definitely go with her if she was here. But she doesn't have the money for that. And plus, it's not like she can just pull up and take me because I'm on probation. I can't just leave. So, I mean, and that's part of the deeper hole that I got myself in. Like I said, when I had the opportunity a long time ago, none of these things were in effect that are right now. If I would have left then, none of this would have happened. But this is where I'm at now, so 
I gotta make the right choices. It's, it's, in, it's the ball's in my court. It's, it's no one's. It's no one's choice but mine right now. Okay, so what are your next steps? Like, what are you gonna do right now? Where were you headed right now when I approached you? Um, to the laundromat. I'm gonna go see some people that have a phone I can use. I was gonna try to call mom actually right now, but that that's all I was doing as of right now. Yeah. And so, what's your living condition? Just out behind a bush, behind a building for now, or what? Um, I live. One of my friends, Angel. He. Uh, I live inside his garage. Like I sleep on like a like there's a mattress right there. I sleep on. I'm not really outside, but I'm not inside. You know what I'm saying? I'm not behind a bush or behind a dumpster. <laughs> no. Close to it, you know, but no. Are you trying to avoid staying out of trouble as far as like not going into stores, taking yeah. stuff? Yeah, yeah, that's yes. Yeah, I, that's that's one thing I know for a fact I'm done doing. I'm still out here doing drugs, yada yada, but no more. I'm not going back to jail. I hate jail. Jail is for nobody. I asked you if you had seen uh, Carmen, because I haven't seen her in months, dude, right? Cause, uh, I just saw her a couple Carmen. hours ago. You saw her a couple hours ago? Yeah. How's she doing? Is she okay? She, I mean, she's, she's got that, like, you know, she's got the streets taking a toll on her, and she's got that mom with, you know, kids that are driving her crazy that's taking a toll on her and I can understand that too going through all my mom so she's got all those things taking a toll on her you know but she's she's doing okay kids as far as her children or like kids her, like her kids and then her street kids you know the people that she took in and I'm one of them you know so it's just a lot of stress on her yeah she kind of took the role of a street mom for a lot of people right yeah uh, yeah every time I, I the last time the last few times I've seen her Young people are surrounding her and where she's trying yeah. to help them, guide them, and whatnot, right? Yeah. Uh, and, I, and, and as you know, I, I gave you the update that uh, Miggs is uh, locked up. He won't be getting out for a few more months. Yeah. Uh, Carla, she kind of moved out of the area. Uh, has anything changed since you moved here uh, a couple years ago? Is it everything identical? Do you think, or what? Is it getting better? A lot of things. A lot of things have changed. It's got. It's gotten a lot of worse in some ways. You know, the people who stay in the alleys, 20, 40 people. They've arrested all those people. Nobody stays in the alleys anymore. I've known at least you know a handful of people that I can count that have died since I've been here. That I've known, not personally, but you know I've known them. You know, it kind of hits close to home. A lot of things have changed. The cops are cracking down. It's just not. It's not like it used to be. You could go and do whatever you want. I think that's what got me hooked last time was I could just go around and do what I wanted to. But that that's not that's not the case anymore. So now it's just kinda like there's nothing left for me here. I need to get I need to get home. To North Carolina. Yeah. Once you do get home, what what are you gonna do there? Alright. Go somewhere I can stay and, and try to get stable I and mean, my mom's not gonna take me right off the bat. You know, maybe a some somebody I can live with or something. I just need I just need that time frame. I need a good amount of time where I'm just stable and sober. Just leave this behind, you know. Because once I get home, this this is still gonna be fresh on my mind. I need time to push this out of my mind and get this away so I can start fresh. Cause it's it's been a lot. I've been I've been through a lot out here so far. Still going through it. Like danger. Uh, all stuff, all the above. The all kinds. Of, yeah. All that. Fighting people, kind of bullying you, or what? Not really being bullied, but you know, I've been in a lot of situations where I've had to stand my ground. You know, people thinking I'm somebody I'm not. People trying to take what I have. You know, me trying to take something that somebody else has. You know, just all kinds of altercations like that where I've been in physical, all that. It's like survival of the fittest out here, right? It's like a jungle. Yeah. People just trying to survive. Food, clothes. Uh, I can't tell you how many people have told me that their shoes are missing, their yeah. backpack is missing, their yep. clothes are missing. If you if you want something, you gotta sleep on top of it. If you want to be there when you wake up. Yeah. Girls, they wake up. There's a guy, a stranger, laying yeah. next to them. I've seen that on before. On top of them. I've seen that before. Yep. Yep. Talk about scary, you know. Those okay. are just things that we shouldn't see, that we shouldn't experience as as humans, right? Right. Uh. Nick, it was really nice seeing you. I was, I pulled into a parking lot and coming around the corner is you. I recognize you right away. <laughs> yeah. You look like, you look the same. You haven't uh, changed. I mean, you're right. Yeah, you're right. I mean, I don't look as bad. I don't think I look as bad as I did some of those days, but I still look terrible. I know I do, you know. Yeah, overall, you have like a youthful, uh, uh, a youthful look to you. Right? You don't, you don't right. look aged or, or haggard or... You know? Yeah, I'm trying to hold on to that. Yeah, definitely. A couple, couple more years are going to take that away from me for sure out here, you know. 
20 turns into 30 really quick when you're out here, right? It's yeah. It's going to be 100 degrees soon. Yeah. You don't like the heat. Nah. The sun's just going to cook your skin and, yeah. and uh, melt your brain, especially with these blues, okay? So uh, please stay safe. God bless you. Yep. Say hi to your mom, Jennifer. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm going to give you my card again with my number on it okay. so we can uh, talk on a more regular basis to make sure you're okay, all right? All right, cool. Stay safe. We'll talk soon. All right, thank you.